And therefore, we just have to trust Him, and nothing is too difficult for us either yeah. when we trust in, in Him. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, oh, good afternoon, Australia. Uh, Australia, good afternoon. Uh, um, we, we just wondering, we just wondering why we have a church this afternoon. It's supposed yeah. to be morning, but on yeah. uh, morning we fellowship the in the church of Black Town. We have a new friend, Pastor. Uh, the church that we have, uh, we love to fellowship with them every Sunday now. <laughs> so, but we continue our church today, so you are welcome to our church today. And I am Hunta. And so, why, why we're in afternoon is because not only did we go to Blacktown, but previous day on Saturday, we went to a conference with other ministers. And it was, uh, you know, um, we, we, we put six, 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 like six sardines into a small car and we travelled two hours up the highway and two hours back, that's four hours, and then of course the conference was another two or three hours. So, you know, it was quite a, a heavy day. As you get a bit older, you, you can't take the buffeting of the body. Um, but anyway, we, we went there uh, and a sacrifice. But, you know, we give a sacrifice to God and He uh, helps us to get our body in order again. And sometimes it takes a little bit of discipline and therefore 
the, 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 it was what is it, five o'clock, six, six, six o'clock in the afternoon right now in Australia. And so uh, we make this sacrifice for our mailing list, which is extensive uh, throughout the South East China Seas. And uh, so, before I forget, I want to make a notice of this website. My uh, website of uh, Lulu is uh, trafficbuilder2.com and trafficbuilder2.com is working fine. However, something happened to trafficbuilder3.com. Uh, it's supposed to direct onto divine connections of Christ. And why I did that is because some people can't spell. <laughs> Some people can't spell connections the way I spelled it. Is divine connections D I V I N E, and connections is C O W N E X I O N. Now, some people say, "Oh, well, just a clever, just a clever play on words." But if you look it up in the dictionary, you see C O W N E X I O N S as correct spelling. Correct. Uh, so connections of Christ, divine connections of Christ.com. If you can see that, that's how. Now that will work for you. That will go into the the uh, website correctly. Um, and I thought to myself, well, if I buy a domain name of trafficbuilder3.com, I can make it easy for them, which was good. A good strategy, but the thing is not working yet. So um, today I will fix it. Um, and uh, so anyway, if trafficbuilder3.com is not working, then Divine Connections of Christ is working, and uh, we still have a free uh, uh, book to download. Um, and everything will work fine after today anyway. So anyway, we're going to continue our studies um, which talk about uh, the glory of Israel and um, we'll, we'll finish up with King David because you can't have the glory of Israel without talking about King David. And so um, in Acts 19 it talks about the God will restore again the tabernacles of David and so we need to know what the tabernacles of David is, what we can expect from this glory of Israel and what we can expect from the re-establishing of the, you know, God will restore again the tabernacles of David. Now the, just to give you an understanding, a quick understanding of what the tabernacles of David is, the tabernacle when they was bringing it into Israel, there was King David, he flung off all his clothes and just at his uh, undergarments and he danced, you know, before the Lord saying, you know, because he was really pleased that they are bringing into Jerusalem the Ark of the Covenant, you know what I mean? And anybody who, who touches that Ark unlawfully would die. However, he was danced before the Lord, and he was he, he was in preparation for. They was dra dra carrying this. Uh, it's like the Ark of the Covenant was like a big box, and inside they had the Ten Commandments, they had the bones of Joseph, they had the rose uh, of Sharon, they had the, uh, the 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 one that budded budded. You know what was it called? With the. Um, uh, and, and everything like that. They had a lot of uh, different things that we can go through another time. But they had uh, the, the, the promises of God in this box. And, uh, and, and they had these two big rods going through loops um, from the Ark of the Covenant. And they never actually touched, not allowed to touch 
the Ark of the Covenant, and anybody who did would die because the glory would hit them so quickly that it just zapped the life out of them. And so there was many that died, uh, but the only one that could go into the uh, the holies of holies, because that's how they used to present it in a in a tent of the the holy part of the tent, and then the holies of holies is where God was, and you take the sacrifices of the people, uh, the blood of bulls and goats, into that holy of holies and present the blood on behalf of the people. Uh, the blood would represent the sacrifice for sin, and so uh, God would come down and zap that blood, a big puff of smoke would come up, and uh, he would accept that sacrifice for sin for another year. You know, they do that once a year. Now this is the time of the year. Um, I mean, we're not under the Old Testament anymore. We're under the New, glory to God. And our sacrifices of praise, like we just did, our sacrifices of praise is all that's required for us to come in to the holies of holies and present our bodies. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 says present your body to God a living sacrifice for this is your reasonable service you know you present your body Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 says present your body to God uh, as a living sacrifice you don't have to die so your sacrifice doesn't have to die today you bring a sacrifice and you praise God because you are allowed it was usually only just the king and the priest that was allowed to go into the holies of holies. Now because of the blood of Jesus and the New Testament, the New Covenant, then you are allowed to boldly, Hebrews 4.16 says, come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. And so that's something to think about. That's something to rejoice about. That's something to praise God that we don't have to die but we can present our bodies to you, Lord God, and you, you would accept our sacrifice. You would accept us, Lord God. And uh, it says in Hebrews 4, 16, Come boldly to the throne of grace, that may, yet you may obtain mercy and find grace to help at the time of need. Say grace. Grace. Grace, grace to help at the time of need. Now, all of our needs are met in Christ Jesus because of his grace. Say grace again. Grace, grace in Jesus name grace. means God's righteousness at Christ's expense. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God's righteousness at Christ's expense. Hallelujah. And so because of Christ, because of Jesus, because of him paying the price Glory to God. We come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help at the time of need. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Oh Lord, we worship you. We thank you, Lord God. And so we start to understand why we make a big deal over this time of the year of what we call latter hand or What's the other one? Um, see, the Jews uh, have different words for different things. And then there's the Muslims have different words for different things. Uh, and there's uh, uh, Indians, they will have different words for different things. But all these agree in one that this is the time of the year to give thanks unto God for the sacrifices that have gone before us and that we can come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help at a time of need. So this is a special time of the year in the Jewish calendar and all those calendars that went uh, before the one we got now. And so, even though we don't have to keep the traditions of men, it's good to honor what has happened before to get us to this place. You know, we have to honor those people that have served God before us that have get us to this place. We have to honor Jesus of what he did for us to get us 
to this place that we can worship him and that if we worship him and if we reverence him and if we look into the scriptures we will understand and understanding uh, in the glory you will have a manifestation hallelujah and that's what we are all about is looking for the manifestation of the sons of God Amen. Amen. So I've said all that just to say that we are looking for the manifestations of the sons of God. And this is the time, says the Lord. This is the time in, in Romans chapter 8 that all creation groans now. Groans for the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. That's Romans 8, 26. So we, when we pray, we know not how to pray as we ought, but as we pray in the power of the Holy Ghost. Say the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. We pray in the power of the Holy Ghost that we need not any man teach us. In, in John chapter 2, it says, We need not any man teach you, but the same power that we received from the beginning. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Who we'll teach us all things and show us things to come. Uh, John 16 30 says, Your Holy Ghost will show us things to come in Jesus' name. And we will have a manifestation of the glory. Hallelujah. A manifestation of the glory of God. And so we're talking about the glory of Israel manifest in Jesus' name. Glory to God. And we come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain that mercy because we know know the price that has been paid for us and if we have confidence and assurance before God that that price definitely was paid and that Jesus definitely died on that cross and he rose again from the cross rose again from the dead and manifests himself to the disciples he'll manifest himself to us if we stay in faith Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. So that's why we've come and worship Him. You know, praise is when we praise Him. When my, I, 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 I like to praise God because I know that without praise we wouldn't have worship. Amen. Without praise we wouldn't have God manifestation in in that praise. It says. God will inhabit the praises of Israel. And you, Israel today, if you believe, you, there's no difference between Jew and Gentile. There's no difference between the, the, what's happened in the Old Testament to the New Testament. There's a merging of our faith, the merging of people coming together. And there's unity. Say unity. unity. And there's unity in diversity. We're not all the same. No. We're far from it. But there's unity in diversity when we ask Jesus to be our Lord and Saviour. Can you say amen? amen? Oh, glory to God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the price that has been paid in full. It paid in full. You don't have to do anything but believe and the power of Almighty God and the blood of Jesus was more than enough to pay the price for our salvation today more than enough more than enough and so we praise him and God inhabits the praises of Israel and when he's there when he's there in our praises he will manifest his glory to you and when we worship him our spirit and the Holy Spirit become fused together in one and he will talk to us yeah. and some people say what's the big deal about? The big deal is that it's God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, is talking to you today. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that? Mm -hmm. 
Why do we praise him? Why do we worship him? He's to bring honor to him so he will talk to us. Because if he talks to us, he'll tell us the answers of what we're seeking for. And he'll bring a manifestation of what you believe in for. He'll bring a manifestation of healing and deliverance, financial and materialistic and every other possible way he will manifest himself for you hallelujah can you say anything mm -hmm. yeah, it God. so God will restore again the tabernacles of David and the tabernacle of David was that he knew there's a time coming the same as Abraham, we go back in time, Abraham rejoiced to see the day of the Lord. He never seen the day of the Lord. But David did, and David rejoiced to see this day, that he would once again be a restoration of the tabernacles of David. David had a revelation. Say revelation. revelation. He had a revelation. Glory to God. He had a revelation that not only the king or the priest could go before God, but it was each individual, you and I, could come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy at a time of need. We thank you, Lord, that we are accepted in the beloved. Oh, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. There is no difference now between Jew and Gentile, Jew and Greek. There is no difference between Australian and Australia and Israel. There is no difference. I don't have to go all the way to Israel to worship God. I can worship Him in my land room, worship Him in my house, worship Him anywhere I want to go and raise my hands and praise him and he will inhabit your praises because you are speaking to Israel today can you say amen? amen glory to God okay so my wife is going to come forward because she's a worshipper you know you've got to be a worshipper to worship Jesus and she's a worshipper and so I'll come back in a few minutes Rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my song, for thou, Lord, art good, and ready to forgive, and tenches in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Give ye, O Lord, unto my prayer, attend to the voice of my supplication. In the day of my trouble I will call upon thee, for thou wilt and answer me. All nation whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name, for thou art great and thus wondrous thing thou art God alone. Teach thy way, O Lord, I will walk in thy truth, unite my heart to fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forever, evermore. Heavenly Father, you are a great God. Teach us your way, O oh Lord. We will walk in the truth, and the truth shall set us free. O oh Lord, we honor your name. We glorify your name. Thank you, Lord. You are a, you're such a great, great God. You are. Thank you, Lord. God is so good for his greatness and mercy. We worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. What you ask, Lord, that you are so good in our lives.
Finishing up with the Tabernacles of David. The glory of Israel and the Tabernacles of David is so significant at this particular time um, because you know what's happening with Israel and uh, in the Middle East there. And uh, we, we have people around the world that don't fully understand and we don't think we'll ever be fully understanding because really. Palestine people should have no reason to complain or to retaliate against Israel at all. You know, if they look into it, they ask, why are you angry about Israel? Most of them couldn't tell you. So, you know, there's, um, there's a reading of these notes that will bring some sort of clarity, and if it doesn't mean clarity, you just study these notes. If you haven't got these notes by now, you send me an email to revbrianpatrick.com and I will send these notes to you completely free, no, no charge here. And also the, the, the videos that go with this, with last week, this week, and uh, we might not finish, we might finish the day again. <laughs> But anyway, we read, get Joshua to read as much as he can today, and uh, we've got a few pages to get you. Thank you, Joshua. Thanks, God. Thank you, Lord, for my son. Hello, my name is Joshua Brian Richards. Today I'm going to be reading David Buys the Deed to the Temple Mount. You can buy Dad's books at charitybuilder2.com and um, at trackfitter3.com, I checked it and it's working. You can go to the buying connections and subscribe to that's mailing list at revbrian.com.au. Remember to like, comment, subscribe to me and Daily Mission on YouTube. I love to Facebook. De David buys the deed to the Temple Mount. In 1 Chronicles 21, we read that Satan rose up against Israel, tempting King David to take a census to determine the strength of his military might. The resulting plague claimed 70,000 lives, but when the angel of the Lord reached the threshing floor of Aronah, the Jubis site in Jerusalem, the Lord relented. God told David to build an altar there. The threshing floor was located on Mount Moriah, where Solomon would build the first temple and Herod would expand the Temple Mount. It's the same mount where Abraham brought Isaac to sacrifice him in obedience to God. As a warrior king, David could have claimed this piece of real estate as his own. The Jebusite owner even offered to give it to him for free, along with oxen for the first burnt offerings. But as this was the place where David would make his altar to the Lord, accepting full responsibility for his sin, he refused the offer. No, I insist on you paying for it. I will not sacrifice I insist on you on paying you for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings like horse cost me nothing. So David brought the threshing floor and the oxen and the paid fifty shekels of silver for them. 2 Samuel 24, 23 to 24. David disobeys God. The census incident was not the only time David disobeyed the Lord. 
This man who was so faithful to God in even the most adverse trials of faith and war turned from seeking the rewards of the king in heaven to seeking the rewards of being a king on earth. Walking around his rooftop, David saw a beautiful woman bathing and sent for her. As Jewish tradition goes, Bathsheba was technically not married since her, since her husband was at war. The wives of fighting men were granted conditional divorces lest their husbands go missing in action, leaving their wives unable to remarry. Nevertheless, God was clearly unhappy with David's adultery and his indirect assassination at Bethesda's husband. God sent the prophet Nathan to reprove him, 2 Samuel 12. Nathan started with a parable of a poor man whose only beloved lamb was stolen and slaughtered for a feast by a rich man with many sheep. David responded with outrage, the man who did this must die. Nathan informed him, you are that man. Nathan rebukes David. David expressed his deep remorse in Psalm 51. In it, he cried out to God in confession. I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Before you, you only, have I sinned and done what's evil in your sight. Psalm 51, 3. David still pursued God above all, asking him to renew and purify his heart. Pray to me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Psalm 51, 10. As well, David deep cared deeply about keeping his anointing. Unlike Saul, perhaps, David pleaded with God, Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Psalm 51, 11. God did not remove his spirit from David, for he would be anointed king from whose lineage every other king of Judah would rule, including the Messiah. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord our righteous Savior. Jeremiah 23. Oh, really? you didn't know that. Jeremiah 23. The name of Jesus is so powerful. When you use his name, the big will place away from you. You are the word of the beginning. Thank you. 
Christ my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stop us again. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. So, I would like to inspire you to continue uh, about 15 minutes or 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. uh, I have a privilege to share with you what I've learned about the Word of God. And thank you for this privilege. Um, I inspired you to continue my learning about the one, my, one of my favorite verse in Jeremiah 33. It says, call me and I will show you the great and mighty things which you do not know. Okay. Uh, those who doesn't know me, my name is Ernest Kizo Richards. I was born in Philippines, but I've been here in Australia for about 19 years this year. Oh, wonderful. December, I remember December 21, I arrived here in Australia, 2005. So thank you. It's a wonderful time. It's so running fast. You know, I could not imagine that I've been here in Australia this year for 19 years. It's so wonderful. God has changed my life. Through this verse that I would like to inspire you, it has changed my life. You know, with the times um, I feel sick, with the times I need Jesus, with the times I'm in trouble, I call his name. You know, it's my... Um, uh, emergency call to heaven. <laughs> call if you if you call emergency here in uh, in Earth you call zero zero here in Australia try for zero zero. But if you call Jesus, just call thirty three and three. Huh? <laughs> Jeremiah yeah. thirty three. That's the number of Jesus Christ. If you if you're in trouble, just dial Jeremiah thirty three three. J E R three three. Is that is that right? Huh? J E R three three three. Yeah, J R three three Jesus, and He will show you. Ah, tawgun mo, ingon na gino. In bisaya, I would like to inspire you because my husband, it's okay with him if I will translate in bisaya, which my own language. Oh, it's wonderful, you know. I was blessed because. I heard from my one my best friend in many years ago, 1986, my best friend classmate. She, I heard from her. She said, I'm always watching you in Facebook, Ernest. How are you? Go, wow, it's a wonderful thing that it's been a long time. We ha I, I haven't heard her. My best friend. And she said to me, oh, she understand my my uh, my inspirational words. And she inspired. And she said she goes to church now. And she uh, asked me, uh, please pray for me, my best friend. And she, she she's sick. And I prayed over her and she got healed. Oh, thank you, Lord. See, to your faith, you receive complete healing. So I inspired her that I will pray for you. But remember this, the healer is Jesus Christ. So this is the one. Remember this, G Jeremiah. J-E-R. J-E-R. 333. This is the emergency call to heaven. <laughs> but if you call in earthly call, try for zero. That's emergency. You call, hello, an emergency. But if you call Jesus, you're in trouble. Call Jesus. Oh, I will call Jesus. You're in trouble. And he will answer you. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can tubagon. You know, siya. Tawagun mo ko o magapit kita o dagong mga butang na malison na wala na yung mungibalui. You know, even impossible. Mayroon ka, ay, impossibly. You know, I I used to be like that. I, I used to be a negative person. You know, when I was in Philippines. And, ay, I don't think so. That's my negative. Negative. Ay, uh, mm, uh, I don't believe that. Just, that's mine. But with, since I became a Christian, I tried to believe that God can heal from sickness. God can do a miracle in your life. He is rescuer in times of trouble. So meditate the word day and night. 
and make a way to prosper and give you successful in life that's my, what that is me right now i have successful in my life because i called him and he made a way to prosper in my life you know the huge blessing we should be grateful is not only that we can see on this earth you you talk about blessing you thought why god bless you because you have a new house god bless you because you have a new car you have you got everything there that's a blessing but we have to be grateful the number one the huge blessing na ato yung pasalamatan sa ginoo that we should be grateful to the lord na buhit patamo na siya i always talking about this because i inspire you how god changed my life you know change he changed my life yeah our heavenly father wants us to call him in jr jeremiah 33 and he will answer you and tawag mo siya o magatubag ka nimo o magapakita he will show you in bisaya magapakita o dagko mga butang a mighty things dagko mga butang nga malisod nga a mighty thing which you do not know see even impossible God can do that for you. Kung do na kay pagsalig sa ginoo. Kung if you have faith on Jesus, no wavering, wala ay pagduwa-duwa, no doubt. Imo jud mo receive ang imong tubag gikan sa ginoo ni Jesus Cristo. Muna siya. How do you call unto the Lord? Muna siya pagutan. How do you call? The way to call on the Lord is to first open your heart. Imo jung abrihan ang imong kasing-kasing, isulod nimo ang kasing-kasing ngadto sa Ginoo, purify your heart and then open your mouth and Lord, where are you Lord? I need you Lord, help me. Cry out to the Lord when you need him. Cry out Lord, I need you. Help me. Help me from sickness. Redeem me from the curse of the law. Therefore I forbid any sickness or any disease rise instantly in the name of Jesus. You know the best doctor that we have is Jesus Christ. It's not doc it's not your doctor. Your doctor can make a mistake sometimes, you know? Can make a mistake. We, we cannot trust our own doctor but you can trust Jesus you can trust call him and he will show you the great and mighty things which you're gonna do that is promise you know he kept this promise our Jesus Christ is not a liar he kept his promise call him and seek him and you will you will find him what is Jesus calling to calling us to do do you think you might thinking about this thought but God called of us to be his disciples and to do his work. We need to serve the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. That's what God wants us. God wants us to serve him, to, to, to be the center. Whatever your goal in your life, he is the center of our lives. He is the center of our goal. He is the center. Without him, we can do nothing. You know, you can do nothing. Our, our life is empty without Jesus. Our life is unworthy without Jesus. He is the one. He is an answer of all you need. He is the one who supply all your needs. He is the one who supply whatever you need to Him. You know, when many Christian is not being available when God calls. This is really true. Many Christians at this time, you know, they forget to read the Bible. They, their Bible is separate now because of mobile phone. Yes, you can check the Bible there in mobile phone, but it's good to read the Bible, the proper Bible. And you can, the more you read the Bible, the more you learn about Jesus. So many Christians, and um, when you woke up early in the morning, you should, we should pray. Lord, thank you for all the blessing, Lord. Thank you that I'm still alive. We should not go straight away to our mobile phone and check if there is anybody, friends or family there in a messenger. Oh, I have a look if my family leave me a message there. Or I have a look the photos of my family or friends. So God got jealous with that. We need Jesus center of all our goal. He is first, city first, 
the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Unaw na to ang pagpangita sa dingharian sa Diyos o kang tanan mo iyang igadugang mo unaw na to siya. Mo ka na. So thank you. Thank you. I will continue this uh, next week. I would love. Huh? I said, huh? Ah, okay. My husband wants me to do um, give more understanding. You know, I'd like this. I, I'm always because God, I testify this. I've been witness God how changed my life. God answered my prayer, you know. I would like to tell you, when I arrived in Australia, I tried to develop myself. I enrolled myself in Army Adult Migrant English Programmer and I've done 510 hours, you know, I could not imagine in my life, 510 hours uh, doing uh, uh, English subject, Adult Migrant, migrant English Programmer, um, what my purpose is to develop myself, how to speak with good grammar, you know, present tense, past tense and future tense, because Mostly of Filipino can speak English, but sometimes we don't realize that our English is like, it's not really good. We speak not really good grammar. I realized that. So I decided to go to TAFE, learning English. I never give up. When I was pregnant with Joshua, I went to TAFE, learning English. And then when I, I, I labor, after my labor, uh, maybe I, I, I uh, rest for about two weeks, I went back to my school and my, my teacher in this, what? You go back straight away. You should rest for a month. No, I have to, I have to go on with my English teacher. And she, she inspired me. She said, oh, thank you. You're, you're such a great student, Ernest. So I've done that and they gave me an award, you know, it's a wonderful God. And because of that prayer, I always pray. Every time I did my assessment task, every time I did my, uh, my work, work placement, I always pray. And it works. You know, it works. I prayed and I cry out to the Lord. I cannot do this without you, Lord. Give me knowledge and wisdom that I'm able to understand my assessment, Lord. That the teacher would understand my assessment. I have my outcome, Lord. A past outcome. And you know what? The outcome is excellence. I cannot imagine that I'm not, I feel that I'm not good enough, but God make me good enough. And God passed me on the test because I pray. It really works. You know, it says if the, the person, the, the, the prayer of the righteous person is so effective. If it came up alayon, pag mayroon kang ano, yung maganda yung ano mo sa loob sa ginoo, if you pray with heartily, with your pray nga matinun, anong din ang mga pag-ampo sa ginoo, mutubag yun na siya. Epektibo yun na ay ang mga pag-ampo. Magagahong yun na ay kung manduna yun ka, yun na yung umak ang ginoo. Imujud siyang tinunon na Lord help me, rescue me Rescue me Lord in times of trouble Rescue me Lord I need your healing I need your favor I need, I need your grace Gracia Imong favor Ang, ang pag-ayos sa tanang sakit-sakit You know I, I really I really inspired I will inspire you That God is so good That's why I, I sing a song lately He is really good He is a great great God He can do possible to you He can make a way for you If you want to achieve your dreams Just work Just go on Don't give up Don't give up You think that you can do You can do this You think that You see yourself is a winner of a key of success. Don't give up on your dreams. Sacrifice is a key of success. Muna siya. Do I owe you give up? I have a friend. She said, she, she's the same of my age. She said, why she's not married until now? She asked me, what I'm, what I'm gonna do early night? Kung siya akong buhaton, bisaya rin siya. Kung siya akong buhaton, wak man yung kumaminyo until now. Pariha may edad. We're the same age. But I said to her, call Jesus. And he will answer you. Call him. Call him what you what you want, Lord. You, if you want to get married, you call him, and he will prepare you. You know, I never, never, I never, never imagined that I'm married with a great man of God. This is God's calling with me. 
My life was totally changed when I married with a great man of God. He is knowledgeable, knowledgeable with the word of God. My life was totally changed and I became a new person. I never be afraid anymore, anymore to do anything. Whatever I, can, I, I will do, I just trust in the Lord. I trust you, Lord. I trust you. I have a new job. I said, Lord, this is a um, difficult job for me, but it's not hard for you. Huh? Do we sing? No heart for Jesus. Make me easy for me, Lord. Make me easy. One time I cried. I said, only two hours, my job. And once a week, Lord, I need more, a little bit more hours, Lord, to survive here in Sydney. But God give me more hours. Thank you, Lord. So because of prayer, prayer, the person of a righteous person, the, the, right, the prayer of the righteous person is so powerful. So ako ni Sid Binisayon, kato mga mga bisaya na di mo kasabot aning ingon nga matinud anon nga ka magbagampo ka nga matinud anon dili ka magmax sa Ginoo tinud-on din mo ang pagampo sa Ginoo mo pilak ka kanya Lord I need you Lord I need you ang ginuho tubag kanimo magagagahom di ana powerful powerful si powerful at epektibo effective he keep his promise Ang iyang pulong matinod ang gayod na. The word of the Lord is so powerful. The word of the Lord is healing into your body. If you seek right now, you have to rebuke in the name of Jesus. Use the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. You said, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but the power, love, a sound of mind. In Isaiah, ang ginawa na na kung maghatog o espiritu sa kahadlok, kung dili espiritu sa gugma o sa malinawang panguna-una. So salamat. Thank you, Lord, for all the things you have done to us. And thank you. We love you guys. And thank you by watching our Facebook Live or our YouTube. You're supporting us already. And thank you. We love you. And if you need a prayer, send your prayer request and we will pray for you. And thank you. I uh, have many friends said their, their prayer answered. So thank you, Lord. So remember this. We are not a healer. Jesus is a healer. Through your faith, you receive completely healing. In Jesus' name, amen. It, it come, come back in a few minutes and we'll pray for okay. the people. Okay. I just wanted to... Uh, this is off our subject, but I just want to... Um, read what the word says about husband and wife you know and um, there's a, a, a people that ask questions but they don't wait for the answers because uh, which are you know are, uh, some uh, lots of filipinos actually do this to me in philippines and that is they ask me questions but they think they know the answer already you know, I think I know the answer. They'll say, I think I know the answer to this already, but I just want to know what you say. But they want you, by, by saying that, they want me to agree with their understanding of a doctrine that is, is really self, uh, you know, if they read the Bible, it's self uh, it, it, self-interpretation, it interpretates itself. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let me see. I'm going to read from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8. It says, Now, as touching things of uh, offered of idols, you know that we have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but charity edifies. In other words, knowledge puffs up, but love. And, and so, you know, don't get proud with your knowledge of knowing things because, you know, not everybody knows what you know. Now, I mean, you might think that you know little, but you know lots. But it's not everybody that knows what you know, and therefore, you have to have love towards the people that have not the knowledge that you have. Yeah. And so, if any man thinks that he knows anything, he knows nothing. You know, if you think you know it all, the Lord says, yeah, you know nothing. But if you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, he will exalt you in due time. Yeah. 
Um, so if any man thinks he knows, you know, everything to know, then <laughs> you know nothing, you've learned nothing. Um, uh, and he, uh, if any man love God, and the same is known of him, as concerning therefore the eating of those things which are offered unto idols. Now see, this is the thing, that some things do change with the New Testament, but some things they will never change, and that is the eating of food that is already offered up to idols. Uh, I never forget that this this is true, no exaggeration. I was in China one time, and uh, <laughs> in China, the only people that really have the freedom to preach the gospel are the Catholic Church. And occasionally, you get into a Catholic Church and they'll let you preach uh, on, you know, on rare occasions. But anyway, there's times that I've been got behind different pulpits in China, uh, which is, which is a, you know, a bit of a risk, <laughs> because you get arrested yes. uh, if you preach the gospel that we know. But the gospel of the Catholic Church, uh, you know, been tested and proven, and uh, t what they call tested and proven, to be in submission to the government. And so, therefore, they let the Catholic Church fly by the seat of the pants, you know what I mean? <laughs> and so, if any man love God, the same is known. Concerning, therefore, the eating of things that are offered unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and there is none other, none other, no other God but the God but one. There's, you know, not many gods. There's only one, really, that we're concerned about. For though he be that are called gods, whether in heavens or on the earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father of whom we are all, all things are made. Uh, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him, we uh, you know, in all things are made by God, and uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is Lord over everything, and Lord of us, or how be it, there is not in every man that knowledge, for some with conscience of the idol unto the, this hour eat it as things offered unto idols, and their conscience being weak is defiled. But meat condemneth us not to God, but neither if, the, if we eat, for are there better things if we eat not? and we uh, that would become worse and take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block of them which are weak in other words now this really happened i'm not exaggerating it was in china and i was invited by this church leader to come and have lunch with them and i knew that this church leader and I prayed over the food that was offered up to idols. And I thought, oh, 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 oh Lord, what do I do? And he says, well, you, you, you believe when you pray that you, all things are sanctified and given thanks to prayer. I said, yeah, that's right. And he said, well, you pray over the food. And I said, are you going to eat with us? He said, are you too proud to eat with us? And I said, what, do I give that appearance? He says, oh, he says, if you don't eat with this, it's because you're too proud. And he, he was trying to, he's actually not putting me down, he was putting down my beliefs. And I knew this. He put, tried to put down the Lord Jesus Christ. I knew this. And I says to him, well, in my Bible it says, all things are blessed and sanctified with the word of God and thanksgiving. So if you let me pray, I'll eat. He said, by all means you pray. And I, when I prayed, I prayed like, like thunder. 
it must have sounded like thunder. He said it, it sounded like thunder when you prayed. And I said, well, it was lightning that I wanted. <laughs> I'm thinking of Elijah, you know, when he prayed and God sent uh, lightning from heavens and brought down bush and consumed the sacrifice, you know, during Elijah's days. And uh, <laughs> I prayed and I said, Lord, I just pray that all things are blessed and sanctified by the word of God and thanksgiving. I bless this food in Jesus' name by the blood of Jesus. And I'll carry it on like this. And he goes, Whoo, well. <laughs> he says, I don't know whether I can eat now. He says, yes, I pray. So he prayed. And then I prayed. And then he prayed. And I prayed. And you know, it, it's, it's, he said, well, it's nothing going cold here. It's already cold, you know, so don't worry about it. And he prayed some more, and I prayed some more. And I looked at him, I said, who's turn is it? And he, we both cracked up and laughed at each other. And we ended up embracing one another, you know that? And I prayed for him. Well, I said, I don't need prayer, thanks. And he looked at me and he says, you frightened of I said, I'm not frightened of anything. I said, no weapon formed against me or prosper, but my righteousness is not the Lord Jesus Christ. And every time I said Jesus, he struck, he went like this, you know. And I said, Well, you frightened of Jesus? He said, I go and he said, I believe in Jesus, I believe in Jesus. I, and I said, Yeah, but you believe in a lot of other things too. He said, I believe in Jesus. And you know, I got him almost to the almost like to the edge of a cliff. Yeah. And then one more step, he would have been saved, I'll tell you. Because wow. he's saying that I believe in Jesus. And he was a Buddhist priest believing in Jesus Christ. <laughs> he says, I believe in Jesus. I believe in the blood of Jesus. I believe in what you pray, it will come to pass. <laughs> I said, in Jesus' name, you will come a Christian and you'll give glory to God. And, you, and he said, he said, is that prophecy? <laughs> I said, it's sure is. I said, that's as, that's as close to prophecy you'll ever get. And anyway, that man is serving the Lord today. Wow. He's a pastor now. He's a, well, I don't know about a pastor, but he's serving the Lord. He's not a Buddhist priest anymore. Thank and you, that, Lord. And that is absolutely, a, really, oh, I'm amazed with the power that we have got in Christ. And, Amen. You know. What's a powerful how about, the other, how about the other time I was in Siggy Hall and the man with a bone in his nose? <laughs> <laughs> he served me. Now that man, he came to pastor. Wow. Uh, you know, we don't understand the power that we have in Christ. Amen. And Christ is not Jesus' second name. Christ means the power of Jesus. It Amen. means the anointing Hallelujah. of Jesus. Jesus Christ is not the full name of Jesus. Yeah. Jesus is what we know, and Christ is the anointing of that person, Jesus. Amen. Now, Christ Jesus means that the anointing of Jesus. Jesus Christ means Jesus the anointed one see. Yes. but never does that word Christ mean something else it always mean the anointed one or the anointing is coming you see. and you've been anointed Jesus is alive in you Amen. you have the power of almighty God to sanctify what's sanctified what does sanctified mean to you it means you separate what you pray for, you separate it from the world unto God. Now, I haven't got to where I'm going, so I'll skip. So I'll we pray now for those people. I'll skip over to where we're going. And uh, it says here, he talked about, I, I might have lost my place, and that's why I, I can't find it again. But he talked about how male and female become one in in the spirit of God and uh, and I've lost my place so I'll carry on for it. but I'll, I'll have that for next next week I want to tell you that, that not only are we got the power to sanctify or separate things from idols you're supposed to separate yourself first you see and if you can separate yourself from the things of the world when you speak and when you pray you separate things from the world 
separate your food unto God, separate your things, and the two become one when you're married, and you become one in, in spirit. And when two agree on touching anything, it, it's powerful, it's powerful in God. And uh, you know, not even the pastor can tell the congregation what to do when you've got two people agreeing on the God's word. You become powerful in, in Christ, in the anointing of God. And uh, I realized that today when, you know, the, the sermon that I was listening to, that we become powerful in Christ. And you know, you can prophesy things into being and uh, you can't undo what you do. You prophesy things into being and it will come to pass. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and you shall eat the fruit thereof regardless whether you want that fruit or not. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and you shall eat the fruit thereof. Okay. By your words, Jesus said, by your words you'll be justified and by your words you'll be condemned. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, see. And so, as we speak words of edification, exhortation and comfort to one another, it will come to pass. Say it will come to pass. It's come to pass. It will come to pass. You see. And uh, this is what God is trying to say through Corinthians. He's saying that the two become one. Uh, I don't know what. I got marks in that Bible. I got marks in this one. Then do you mark a Bible like me? I'm just, you know, just show you my Bible. You know, you know, you know, mark it. Because that Bible is just pen and ink. Just pen and ink. It's holy word of God, yes. But it's just pen and ink. But when you swallow it, you know, it becomes life and active. It becomes this, the Logos becomes a rainbow when it comes out of you. And it comes out of you like a two-edged sword. And it pierces and divides the joints and the manner and is a discerner of the intents of the heart. Hallelujah. So, because of that, we're going to pray and sanctify some of the people from the world and unto God. Separate them from the world unto God. Hallelujah. If you got your name on our list, we are praying for you. If you haven't got your name on our list, we want you to put it on there so you have a testimony of your own and you are sanctified from the world, the devil and the sickness and all the evils that are in the world you be sanctified, separated unto God in Jesus' name. And two on earth agree is touching anything, it shall be done. Hallelujah. So you raise your hand towards the screen now. If you have your name on our list, you've been praying for right now. If you don't have your name on the list, just send us an email. Put your name on the list. Oh, Heavenly Father, we pray for our main events. We pray for all those that can hear us. We pray, Father, that this word would go forth with power and authority. It would not return void or empty. It will accomplish that you please, in Jesus' name. I sanctify those people from the world that have sickness and to death. They'll be broken in Jesus' name. Cancer, you just the name, have to bow the name. Bow your knee to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All kinds of sicknesses now. They're looking at me. And I command you to leave the body. Let it go. Jesus is Lord here. Let the anointing of grace come upon them. Oh, in Jesus' name, we pray for words of knowledge, words of prophecy, words of edification and comfort. Lord God, I pray for those people that have never accepted Jesus. Right now, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you've never asked Jesus to come into your life, you be born again. Do it now. You say these words with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I believe Jesus died for me. I believe Jesus died for me. And rose again and from the dead. And again from the dead. I ask you to be my Lord. I ask you to be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my 
Savior. Be my healer. To be my healer. And my deliverer. And my deliverer. And come into my heart now. Come into my heart now. And make me born again. Be born again. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer for the first time in your life, or maybe if you said that prayer for haven't seen it for a long time, say it again now and be born again. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Lord God, I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to fall upon people. They will repent, give their life to Jesus, and have that life-changing experience through knowing Jesus and the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Sing a song as we go. Sing a song. Okay. As we go. As we go, we sing a song. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I think we sing a song with a jolly song. Okay. Ah, this one. Say, Lord, we can move the mountain.